Hey guys, welcome to section 5.2. In this section, we'll talk about how to add and subtract rational expressions. Let's get started. So going back to perhaps elementary school or whenever you learned how to add or subtract fractions, hopefully you remember that adding or subtracting fractions required common denominators. Meaning, uh, let's say we have this example, three over four plus five over seven, if we understand what happens with numbers, the same exact thing needs to be done with algebraic expressions as well. So let's go through this. So first, we see that we do not have common denominators. So we have to multiply each fraction, the top and the bottom, by what's missing from the opposite denominator. So this fraction is missing a 7. This fraction is missing a 4. So what I do is I multiply the first fraction, 3 over 4, by 7 over 7 and I multiply the second fraction, five over seven, by four over four. The reason why I'm allowed to do this, or that I should do this, and not just multiply the top by, four, by seven, or just the bottom by seven. Seven divided by seven is one. I can multiply anything by one without changing it, because anything times one is always itself. So if I multiply three over four by one, I'm not really changing the three over four, I'm just writing it in a different format. Similarly, if I have five over seven and I'm multiplying that by four over four, I'm not changing five over seven because I'm only multiplying it by one. So what that allows us to do is when we multiply fractions, we should multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. So three times seven is 21, four times seven is 28. Here, five times four gives us 20, 7 times 4 gives us 28. So what we didn't have here was common denominators. What we have created here is common denominators. So once we have common denominators, we can rewrite both fractions as 1 with a common denominator. And that's literally why we do this. So instead of writing it as two separate fractions here, we write it as a single fraction with a 21 on top plus the 20 that goes in the numerator, and the denominator, because it's common, you only write it once. At this stage, all we have to do is perform the operation or simplify the top. So in the numerator, we have 21 plus 20, and that gives us 41 over 28. At this stage, we could simplify or reduce the fraction if possible. In this case, nothing goes into both 41 and 28. So since step four doesn't apply, we move on to step five, you leave the answer in factored form. Well, that is it. There's nothing this can be done with because 41 is actually a prime number. So we cannot go any further with this problem. This is it, that's the solution. So here is how we can generalize the steps that we just took to solving our questions. So the very first step that you should be looking at when you're rationalizing or when you're adding or subtracting rational expressions is that you should try to factor the denominators. Uh, I used informal language here, but bottom just means denominator. And then you multiply each fraction, the top and the bottom, by what's missing from the other denominator. And this hopefully is the same exact thing and you recognize it being the same thing from the last example. Then you write it as a single fraction with a common denominator. This step is the same. You multiply or simplify the numerator. That step's the same as well. And then you factor the numerator. This we haven't seen before, but you'll understand why we're doing this as we start getting into the examples. And then finally simplify if possible. If anything cancels, then, then do so. So let's jump into an example. We have x plus one all over x minus four, and we have to Subtract from that x plus one over x squared minus seven x plus 12. So step one, if you remember, was to factor all the bottoms. Well, x minus four is already factored. It's a prime factor, so, or it's a prime term, so we can't do anything with it. To factor the other bottom, we see that a coefficient is one, so we cannot use, uh, we don't have a GCF. Next, we recognize that there's three terms in the problem. And looking at the formulas first, I can find the square root of x squared, but I cannot find the square root of 12. So the formulas go out the window. The next thing I have to think about is if a is one, and indeed it is, so I can use the AC method. 
So I find factors of 1 times 12. This is, hopefully the AC method is not something that's foreign to you at this stage. You understand it and you know exactly where we're going with this. So finding factors of 12 that add up to negative 7 gives us negative 3 and negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12. Negative 3 plus negative 4 is negative 7. So the denominator factors to x minus 3 times x minus 4. So that finishes step 1. Step 2 was to figure out what was missing from each denominator. So if we look at this factored form and look at this factored form, you can see that both fractions have x minus 4 in the bottom. This fraction, the first one, does not have an x minus 3. So in order to make the denominators the same so that they have both terms on the bottom, I have to multiply top and bottom of the first fraction, the numerator and the denominator, by x minus 3. So that's exactly what I did here. The reason why we cannot just multiply it by the denominator is because then we will change the problem, which we're not allowed to do. So anytime we multiply a, an expression uh, by 1, nothing changes, as a reminder. So here, if we multiply by x, or, x minus 3 over x minus 3, we're OK. We're not changing the problem fundamentally. And therefore, we can continue on with our question. So this fraction was missing nothing, so I just kept it as it is. Now. If we have x plus 1 times x minus 3 all over x minus 4 times x minus 3 minus x plus 1 over x minus 4 times x minus 3, these two expressions now have the same denominator. So the next step was to write both of these expressions as a single fraction with a common denominator. So I only wrote down x minus 4 times x minus 3 once. I don't have to write it twice. I cannot write it twice. A common denominator means that you're only writing it once. And the numerator just gets copied down. x plus 1, x minus 3, x plus 1. Notice I put parentheses around all the terms because there's minuses involved. Even if you didn't have minuses, I would still insist on using parentheses. They just save you from a lot of silly mistakes. Step 4 was to multiply the top or to simplify the numerator. So if we were to FOIL this out, x times x would give us x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. 1 times x is 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And here we distribute the negative. So negative times x is negative x. Negative times 1 is negative 1. Notice I don't touch the bottom. And that's not something that I mentioned as a rule, but uh, we leave the denominator alone. The end goal is we want to have everything as factored as possible. The denominator is already factored, so multiplying it out only to factor again would be a giant waste of time. So never, ever, 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 once the denominator has been factored, touch it. Just leave it alone as it is. Now here we have some terms that we could clean up, combining like terms and such. So x squared just comes down. We have a plus x and a minus x, so these two cancel each other out, leaving behind a minus 3x, so that goes there. And then we have a negative 3 minus 1, that gives a negative 4. Here again, we have a trinomial or something with three terms. This is something that could be factored. Again, we notice that one of the coefficients is 1, so there's no GCF. I have three terms. I cannot find the square root of negative 4, so the formulas are out. And a is 1, so I use the AC method. So factoring 1 times negative 4, which is negative 4, gives us these factors. And of these, 1 and negative 4 add up to negative 3. So that's what I use. So I factored x squared minus 3x minus 4 into x minus 4 times x plus 1. Excuse me. x minus 4 and x plus 1. That's where we got the two factors from over, we kept the denominator the same. We didn't touch it. Step five, I forgot what it said. Factor the numerator. Oh, I guess this is step five, factoring the numerator. And then simplify if possible. So here, just like we said in the previous section, we can only cancel top and bottom when we have products. So because I have a product here and because I have a product here, I can cancel this term with this term. I could not do that unless I had products. And if you think about it, go back and think about it. 
That's exactly why we did all of this work, was so that we could create a polynomial that we could factor. At this stage, you might be inclined to think, well, I can cancel this x minus 3 with this x minus 3, and that would be incorrect. You're not allowed to do that because even though you have a product here, you do not have a product here. You have a subtraction. So nothing on top will cancel with anything on the bottom unless you have products everywhere. So this is sort of like unpacking something only to pack it properly. Yeah, if you stick all your clothes into a suitcase and you're trying to travel, then it, it might not close. But if you open it and you take all the clothes out and then you fold them properly and then put them back in the suitcase, well, then the suitcase might be able to close. That's basically the way I see uh, adding and subtracting rational expressions in that you're making it a little more complicated by doing all this only to kind of simplify it at the end and then cancel out the stuff that could be canceled, leaving behind with a nice, easy answer to look at. Uh, this is a longer example, so take a seat back, relax. Here we have this problem, we're subtracting again. So the first step is to factor the denominators. So x squared minus 2x minus 3. I see that coefficient is 1, so no GCF. Three terms. Uh, I think of formulas first, but I cannot find the square root of negative 3, so I move past that. AC method comes into mind because A is 1. So finding factors of negative 1 and 3, or sorry, 1 and negative 3, which is negative 3, gives me 1, negative 3, negative 1, 3. Those are the only two factors. And of these, only 1 and negative 3 add up to negative 2. So that is going to be, uh, that, that's what I'm going to use as my factors. So this denominator factors to this. And then x squared plus 6x plus 5 I did on this side. Again, coefficient is 1, so I cannot find the GCF. Here we also see that 5 is not a perfect square. I have three terms. 5 is not a perfect square, so I cannot use the formulas. A is 1, so I go on to use the AC method. So 1 times 5 gives me 5. And thankfully or luckily, these are the only two factors we have again. So of these, 1 and 5 add up to 6. So that's what I use as my answers. x plus 1 times x plus 5. So what we've done so far is just step 1. We have factored going from here, the original question, to this expression, which is x minus 3 times x plus 1. These are the factors of this. And x plus 5 times x plus 1. These were the factors of this denominator. Then we have to consider what's missing from each denominator. So if we look here, this fraction has an x minus 3. This one does not. So I need to multiply this fraction top and bottom by x minus 3. Both of them have an x plus 1. So that one's a wash. And then this fraction has an x plus 5. So this fraction needs to get multiplied by an x plus 5 over x plus 5. And x plus 1 they both have, so nothing needs to be done about that. So step 2 was multiply by whatever is missing from the other denominator. So this fraction is missing an x plus 5. This fraction is missing an x minus 3. So again, remember it needs to be multiplied by top and bottom. Because when we multiply something by x plus 5 over x plus 5, we're just multiplying it by 1, because these two cancel out. When we multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3, we're not changing the problem. We're simply multiplying by 1. The next step was once we have the same denominator, so if you see x minus 3, x minus 3, x plus 1, x plus 1, x plus 5, x plus 5, they don't even have to be in the same order. Hopefully you remember that in multiplication, the order is irrelevant. So it doesn't matter whether you write this term first, or you write the x plus 5 first, or you write the x plus 1 first. If you're multiplying all three things, it doesn't make a difference. So since we have common denominators, I'm going to write it as a single fraction with the denominator written just once. So I copied this denominator over, and then the numerator just came down. That was step three. I just copy the question again. At this stage, step four was multiply the top out and simplify. So here, again, you can FOIL. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x. 7 times x is 7x. 7 times 5 is 35. 
Now notice here I have a minus sign. I kept it and I put the answer from multiplying this out in parentheses. This is probably the most common mistake students make in this problem. And hopefully you can recognize and appreciate how long and arduous this is that you don't want to mess up one simple sign. So whenever you have minus signs, anything to the right of the minus sign, always keep it in parentheses so that you have a chance or you remember to distribute the negative. Now, if this were a plus, you'd be home safe because a positive doesn't really get distributed. Even if you were to, nothing would happen. Nothing would change. So here, 3 times three x times x is 3x squared. 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Distributing the negative gives us the same problem, but with opposite signs on the right-hand side. So this is still all step four. We multiplied out the tops, and now we have to combine like terms. So combining like terms gives us negative x squared plus 28x plus 29. And again, remember, I didn't touch the bottom. Once I have the factors for the denominator, I don't touch it because that's what I've painfully been waiting for this entire time. I want to get the numerator factored completely, and I want to get the denominator factored completely so that I can cancel stuff. Um, at this stage, I cannot cancel because I don't have all products. So some of you might be thinking, well, I could cancel this x plus 5 with this x plus 5, x minus 3 with this x minus 3. Cannot do that. You can only do that if you have a product. So coming back down to this, here, this needs to be factored. That's step five. So we recognize that we could factor a negative out of this expression because the x squared term is negative. So, if we fa so from here, I'm heading to there. To factor this, I can factor a negative out of the expression and be left with x squared minus 28x minus 29. All the signs on the inside flip. Now we see that, well, the coefficient is one, so there's no more GCF to be factored out. I have three terms, but I cannot find the square root of negative 29, so the formulas move on. And looking at a, which is 1, I see that I can use the AC method. So I find factors of 1 times negative 29, which is negative 29. And these are the only two factors. 29 is a prime number, so these are the only two factors that pop out. So we multiply x minus 29 by x plus 1 to get factors of this term on the inside. The negative is the GCF, so it sticks around. So now that I've factored the numerator, I'm heading back to this problem. So I replace negative x squared plus 28x plus 29 by what it, fact what it factored to, which was negative the quantity x minus 29 times x plus 1. Now you'll notice I have a negative getting multiplied by this, which is getting multiplied by this expression. So what I've created are products on top, products on the bottom. At this stage, I can do step six, which is simplify. So I see that I have an x plus one on top and an x plus one on the bottom, so I can cancel them out. And then the only stuff that's left over is the negative times x minus 29, that comes here. x minus three goes on the bottom, x plus five goes on the bottom. And that's it. Again, a reiteration, you cannot cancel unless you have all products. Here we don't have all products, so we kind of have to take everything out of the suitcase, arrange it on the floor maybe, uh, plan it out by days, whatever the case might be, figure out, you know, this is all the clothes that I'm going to need on the first day. These are all the clothes I'm going to need on the second day. These are all the clothes I'm going to need on the third day and then put them in the suitcase or your bag appropriately. So factoring basically says, hey, I'm doing things very neatly here. Everything is in its nice component forms. That's it for the section. If you guys have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out. Have a nice day.